everyone how are you how is the going i hope you have been doing well uh welcome back to our youtube channel my name is naomi and this is the easy qs channel this is a channel that discusses everything to do with buildings and more specifically on the area of quantity survey our main aim is to assist students uh go through their notes and to understand concepts that they could have bypassed them in class we also help uh, long distance students who are learning by themselves to go and just undertake the exams. We do tutorials uh, to them privately so that they can be able to do their exams and pass them very well. And also for the students who are in university and colleges, we help them with their assignments. And in case you need any tutorials, you can always contact us via my email which is in the description box so welcome back again uh, we always have our classes we have membership packages uh, for all our subscribers remember if you haven't subscribed uh, remember to subscribe we always have benefits for our subscribers uh, in terms of notes and also if you want to be our member you can always join we usually have live classes for our members uh, so that you can be able to learn together so without further ado today's lesson we are going to discuss the theory part of quantity survey and uh, it's a continuation from our previous video in our last class we discussed the roles of a quantity surveyor and a contractor so in today's video we are continuing from there and we shall start by discussing about subcontractors who is a subcontractor a subcontractor is a party in the construction industry who agrees to do parts or all the work of the main contractor uh, under a separate contract with the employer. The employer of the subcontractor is usually the contractor. The contractor and the main contractor usually come uh, into a contract and they agree uh, subcontractor uh, which is the work you know the whole the, all the work for the construction project when it is awarded it's usually awarded to the main contractor so the client comes into a contract with the main contractor for the main contractor because sometimes the project is too big he has to delegate some work so he delegates to subcontractors so there's there's a subcontractor who can take excavation another one could do uh building the walls another could do roof roofing there's a subcontractor who could do uh, electrical works or plumbing works so uh, these sections of work are usually sometimes allocated to someone else other than the main contractor now the main contractor becomes the boss of the subcontractors right so the con subcontractor and the main contractor usually come into a contract and they agree uh, what uh, are the terms of payment, what is the expectations, what uh, work does the main contractor expect the subcontractor to do and uh, about the payments. So they come into a contract between a main contractor and a subcontractor. So uh, there are two types of subcontractors and one is the domestic subcontractor. The domestic subcontractor is usually hired by the main contractor. He is employed directly by the main contractor. He supplies the materials sometimes. He does the labor. He provides for the labor, for the sections given to him. So the domestic subcontractor is usually employed directly by the main contractor. There is another type of subcontractor called the nominated subcontractor. As the word states, nominated. You see, we have nominated members of parliament. Do we vote for them? No. We usually, uh, they are usually nominated by the political parties. They are chosen. They are appointed. Same to subcontractors. There is a subcontractor who the client could have uh, liked for him to come into the project to do specific works for him. Especially if it's specialized works. Uh, specialized work, they are, these, they are not normal works within the construction project. They are works that need require some expertise. For example, if we are doing gas installation, not everyone that we could trust with to do gas installation is quite a risky project. So, 
in the whole project, maybe we are building a school and we are building laboratories. The, the client could have trusted a certain subcontractor who he would like to do some specific work. And it doesn't require uh, to be a very risky job. It could be even uh, some very nice styling. Maybe he's using imported tiles from a very different country and he knows someone who can do it as an expert. So he will appoint that subcontractor. But once that subcontractor is appointed, uh -huh, and now he's called the nominated subcontractor, when he comes to the construction site, he works under the main contractor. He's still a subcontractor, but he works under the main contract under the supervision of the main contractor. So the difference between domestic subcontractors and nominated subcontractors is the who appoints them. The domestic subcontractor is employed directly by the contractor. The nominated subcontractor is usually nominated or appointed by the client to do specialized works. All right. So uh, when the client appoints a subcontractor, he does it through his architect. That is a point to note. Eh? Uh, so the client usually uh, appoints a subcontractor through his architect and then the subcontractor works under the main contractor. So what are the reasons for subcontracting? Why should a contractor subcontract some work? One, it is to lessen the cost for the contractor. You see, uh, we could be having a multi-million project. We are building a city. A contractor is awarded the, that job or it's a very big mall. You see, a contractor uh, does not have all that money, those millions of money to start with or to do the project. He could not be having all that money. So it's so that he can lessen the, his burden, financial burden in funding the project before the client compensates, he usually involves subcontractors. Once he delegates, the subcontractor will come in with his finances so that he can help in financing the project. So he lessens the cost for the subcontractors. Uh -huh. So another uh, way that he lessens the cost for the contractor is because uh, sub subcontracting usually uh, reduces the cost to a large extent. Uh, how does that come in? It's because um, once work is subcontracted, you see, uh, the subcontractor is supervising his own section of the work. There is less wastage. Maybe the contractor will not be able to supervise that well if it's a very big project. It leads to savings. Because uh, once everyone is appointed their own uh, part of the work, they are able to concentrate on it. So a lot of savings is made in terms of material wastages, maybe even labor, because these are some experts coming in. They somehow, this cost will be less. Then um, the other reason is because uh, the subcontractor uh, usually mostly are specialized in the nature of work. So sometimes if you are uh, subcontract, for example, you give a subcontractor for painting, it's not like when the contractor could go and find painters to come and do the work. Because these people are, are experts, they will be able to do a very nice job because they are used to do, doing that work. So the, na the nature of the work is usually specialized and this one uh, leads to more expertise. Because we will find a subcontractor for the tiles. The tiles subcontractor is used to tiling. So he does a very good job. When it comes to painting, we find a subcontractor for painting. So he will do a very nice job. Alright. So, uh -huh. uh, we have talked about, uh, let's say there are three points. The first point, uh, it, it lessens the cost for the subcontractor. It lessens the cost for the contractor. This one, it explains that this contractor is able to make savings. How is he able to make savings? Because everyone is able to, to concentrate on their part of work. So there will be less wastage of materials. Uh -huh. you just imagine you find a, a painter who is not uh, that used to painting. Most of the paint will be wasted. You'll find uh, if it's tiling, some tiles are, so many tiles are getting wasted because they are getting broken and like when you have a specialist. The second point is that um, 
overstretched resources let's put it that way it's overstretched resources it helps the contractor not to overstretch his resources if it's a very big project a multi-million project the financial burden for the contractor is quite big so to lessen that financial burdens he brings in subcontractors who will come with their own money then do the work then be compensated the third point is that specialized nature of work leads to more expertise and to a better finished product all right so there are three points all right so